I am sick and tired of people pretending like there's not a problem. They see it, they recognize it, they know it's there, but for whatever reason, they just will not talk about it. Over the last few years, there's been a growing divide between players, developers, and journalists, and it's only getting worse. Recently, an article popped up from The Guardian, where the writer in question calls for the gaming industry to make a stand against the players, to speak on behalf of the journalists, the critics, and everyone else, citing that they see signs of disturbing misogyny. I realize that this is a hot button topic. This is a controversial issue. And more times than not, when people cover this, they're covering it from the extremes. And I'm going to be talking about it. And I'm bringing the most dangerous position into this conversation, which is the voice that often goes unheard. The voice of the sane. Former head of Kotaku, Kenza McDonald of The Guardian writes, The disturbing online misogyny of Gamergate has returned, if it ever went away. While some of their language has changed, the sentiment of the latest aggressive movement is just as distressing. It is time for the games industry to stand up to it. She continues with, A few months ago I wrote about a consulting agency, Sweet Baby Incorporated, that found itself in the center of a conspiracy theory. Aggrieved gamers on a Steam forum had erroneously concluded that a small agency was somehow mandating the inclusion of more diverse characters in games. Depressingly, but unsurprisingly, the result was a tremendous amount of targeted harassment towards the people that work at Sweet Baby and every journalist who reported on it, particularly women. It was a disturbing echo of Gamergate, an online harassment campaign 10 years ago that initially sprung up from the wild accusations of a game developer's vindictive ex-boyfriend. The language has changed a bit in the past decade. They used to be upset about SJWs or social justice warriors, and now they've taken issue with a different acronym, DEI, diversity, equality, and inclusion, or just good old woke. But the sentiment from this group is the same. Games are for us, only for us. And if you want games to change or tell stories outside of the straightforward male-oriented power fantasies that we grew up with, well, that's not allowed. We won't stand for it. In fact, we will try to aggressively harass you out of the space entirely. Unfortunately, the anti-woke campaigning has not led up much in the intervening months. Led by a coterie of the usual grifters, they have taken issue with in no particular order the fact that Aphrodite, the literal goddess of love, is not hot enough in Super Giants Hades 2. That female characters in recent game trailers all have square jaws and masculine bodies. That journalists gave the recent PS5 game Stellar Blade bad reviews because its female characters were too hot. That too many games feature DEI haircuts and that Ubisoft was somehow forced by shadowy forces of wokery to make the main character in its upcoming Assassin's Creed game a black samurai, contradicting historical evidence. This last claim was bolstered by the king of bad posters himself, Elon Musk, who replied to a tweet about this manufactured outrage with DEI kills art. Man, there is a lot that was said here. First thing I must say is this, the closer in proximity to an issue that you are, the less perspective that you have on it. Think about it. When you're right up on top of it, the only thing that you can see is the opposition. What they're saying, what they're thinking, what they want to do, what they think about you. And as such, you're always on the offense or the defense. And that goes for both sides of these kind of discussions. And I think what really highlights that loss in perspective is how they bring up Gamergate in this article. Because from my perspective, as somebody that had nothing to do with it whatsoever, I wasn't even making videos on video games at the time, I read a couple articles, watched a couple videos, and I always viewed it as players waking up to the realization that there could be some conflicts of interest within the industry that are working against and doing a disservice to the consumer. Why wouldn't they think that? When every other industry that's out there has some level of corruption, why would it be so far off for players to believe that video game studios and publishers are colluding with journalists and critics to make sure that their games are shown in a better light, especially when so much money is riding on the line to begin with? And I think that Gamergate was something that actually did a solid service to the players because they woke up to that realization. They're a little bit more cautious with their spending. They don't take review scores at face value and say, there we go. I guess I'm going to go ahead and buy this game. They're a little bit more cautious with it. They want more information. They don't want to just see a cutscene trailer. They want to see gameplay. They don't want to see gameplay in like three minutes. No, they want to see 15, 20, 30 minute clips. Heck, they want to watch somebody play the game for a few hours before they want to buy that game. And I think a lot of that is coming from what had happened back then. And man, you know, it just goes to prove that these sides that are so, so opposing to one another, they're of the exact same polarity because they both sound the exact same when you start paying attention to them from a much wider angle. 
and they're like dogs that are barking on either side of a fence and they're getting further and further away. They could cross behind the fence, by the way, that's open on the other side, but they don't want to have that kind of discussion. And what ends up happening is they start trampling on and drowning out the genuine concerns and the voices of the people that are in the middle. And that's often where the truth ends up lying. And there are issues that are in the games industry today that she's glossing over. And the proof is just how she brings up some of the games that are out there, especially talking about Hades 2 or Stellar Blade and, and the backlash that came with some of those games. You have to ask, why are players agreeing with this? Don't believe that everybody agreeing with it is just these crazy bigots and wild folks that are out there. No, there's other people in the middle that are agreeing with them as well. And why is that? But nobody wants to pay attention to that. For some odd reason, <laughs> when there's a culture war, there can only be one winner. People in the middle can't actually exist. But for me, I say fuck that. I'm going to clearly state my position. Games should be, and the vast majority of times are, inclusive. But at the exact same time, we can't pretend like we're okay with the industry heavily leaning into inclusivity for profit. It's blatant and it's plastered everywhere. Movies, TV, gaming, it's overwhelming. Co-opting identities and gender not for the sake of art, quality, and ethics, but for money and personal preservation. Why do companies change their logos to rainbows in the US and EU during Pride, but keep it their standard logo in other countries? Why are different races and genders minimized or removed in games, movies, and television in China? It's because none of these companies care about you. They care about what's in your wallet. And that goes for both sides of this debate. Truth of the matter is, these companies will do anything for money. And the real unease, the real issues at play, is that the biggest players in the industry are trying to wrangle everyone into one single audience, and it's causing a lot of issues. Extreme positions can't gain any traction unless there are those in the middle who can see truth on one side's opinion. Forced DEI is killing games. However, it's not for any of the reasons that anybody is saying right now. And instead, it's being co-opted into part of a culture war, and that's being done on purpose by these creators. It's the intended outcome. What nobody is talking about is why are players seeing female protagonists and a diverse cast of characters and immediately assuming that that game will be bad. It's because players have begun to perceive wokeness in games as a bad thing, not because of the inclusivity itself, but because of its perceived lack in quality. Almost every television show, movie, and game today, pre- and post-release, that runs around doing interviews and press releases about how inclusive their media is, ends up being a dumpster fire of a final product because the creators are so focused on the identities rather than the qualities. The poor quality in various media today is now being represented by the characters that these studios are putting into these games. As such, these creators are quite literally training people to believe that diversity and inclusivity are what are ruining games, not bad design and poor writing. Inclusivity and representation are great things. Anyone can agree on that. However, bad representation for the sake of it just being there, either for virtue signaling or marketing purposes, puts a face, a signifier, on what is ruining games in the eyes of players. They are creating targets. When I see a developer feel the need to virtue signal about how great it is that they put a woman into their video game or how they made a character gay, it shows me that they have no confidence in the work itself. It's all about the identity of the character and not the qualities of that character's design. The quality of the story that's told and the innovation that it brings to the game's experience. I assume that it's not high quality, and most times it's not. Journalists, developers, and players then jump to defend the practice, not realizing that these creators are using social issues as a shield of inclusivity to defend their poor quality, lack of skill, lack of ability, and lack of creativity by saying that anybody who's criticizing them are bigots. Checkmate. What's really disappointing is that there's not enough people that are calling this out saying it for what it is, that it's not wokeness or DEI that's killing these games, it's people without talent that are killing these games. Name a game that was perceived as woke, that had awesome gameplay and a great story, and nobody wanted to play it, and it didn't do well in sales. Guess what? You can't find it. It doesn't exist. Final Fantasy XVI portrayed a relationship between Dion and Sir Terrence. It was tasteful, it was well done, the story was great, the gameplay was awesome, the music was absolutely banging in that game. Guess what? Zero backlash. Baldur's Gate 3. Harold is one of the greatest RPGs of all time. A game that many players have pointed to and said, this is the game. Why can't you guys make games like this anymore? The most aggressively buy game that's on the entire market. 
No backlash. It's really disappointing that people like the folks that are writing this article right now that are involved in a lot of these communities aren't the ones that are out there that are fighting on their side, that aren't talking about how some of these companies are out there co-opting people's identities and races for the use of profit and for the use of protecting their own jobs, shielding themselves from criticism behind a shield of inclusivity. They're the ones that are ruining games, people that don't have a creative cell in their entire body. The article continues with, Assassin's Creed Shadows producer Mark Alexis Cote addressed Musk's tweet in an interview with Game Files' Stefan Tatilo last week. It's sad he's just feeding hatred. I had a lot of three-word replies that came to mind, he said. The first thing I wanted to do was go back on X that I had deleted and just tweet back. What Elon says is not the game that we're building. People will have to play the game for themselves, and if, within the first 11 minutes and 47 seconds, they aren't convinced of what we are doing, we can have the discussion. For the record, there is plenty of historical basis for the depiction of Black Samurai Yasuke in the game. Just after Summer Games Fest finished, the anti-woke gamers found a new target, a report at IGN which credibly and comprehensively lays out the history of sexism at the developer of the up-and-coming Planet of the Apes meets Sekiro action game Black Myth Wukong. The response, surprise, was to go after the woman who wrote it, while also spinning a ludicrous conspiracy theory that IGN was blackmailing the developer. You can go down a rabbit hole of quite jaw-dropping horribleness on any one of these manufactured conspiracies, but take it from me, it's really not worth it. The reactionary underlayer of gaming's enthusiast media, which makes its home mostly on X and YouTube, does not actually have the slightest impact on how games are made, or indeed which games are made. Look at Gamergate. What did it actually achieve? Games are more diverse than they were 10 years ago, not less. I saw more non-white male faces and characters in this year's spat of Summer Games Fest trailers and demos than at any previous time in almost the 20 years I've been covering games. But they can still make people's lives online hell for a while. I know this because I've been through it several times. It's crazy that you can say something or at least think something in the right direction, but then be completely wrong about it, and it's because, again, she's looking at it through an incredibly narrow lens. Throwing context and nuance aside in the face of being able to shadow box those perceived demons that are across the aisle. Musk was undoubtedly beating the drum of division for engagement purposes. The guy is a content creator more than anybody else. There is tons of examples of people that are like him. But why are there so many people that are finding themselves agreeing with these posts about Assassin's Creed Shadows? Tell me which is more believable. That the vast majority of white male gaming audiences that you perceive don't want black characters in games? Or is it because Ubisoft has been shoveling garbage out for years now? raising their prices to absurd levels, monetizing everything possible, hasn't innovated, and now seems to be using diversity to market a game that everybody knows will be just as repetitive and unoriginal as the prior. All well-adjusted humans that see the direction that all forms of media have been going in lately see the main character isn't Japanese and say, huh. Again, extreme positions don't gain traction unless there are issues that are pushing people from the middle to one side. Now, with that said, I agree with her statement on ludicrous conspiracy theories. With so many people that are out there grifting on both sides of these issues that are making it difficult for you to want to be able to agree with either side because you know that they're going to have some wacko theory that's connected to it, those that are on extreme opposing sides can't agree on something, otherwise they're going to look like they've changed sides. Like Keza, I don't believe that there was an attempted $7 million extortion conspiracy when it comes to Black Myth Wukong, as there is no proof or mention of that anywhere. I mean, look at how many people grifted off of attaching Sweet Baby Incorporated's name to their YouTube titles, articles, and tweets in regards to whatever company allegedly perpetrated this extortion. However, at the exact same time, she completely ignores the cultural differences and the intentional mistranslations conducted regarding the interview with Black Myth Wukong's developer and the garbage level of sensational journalism on the side of IGN, because they cannot cede any ground to those who disagree with them. Plenty of journalists do this, ignoring the elephant in the room because they can't be caught agreeing with the opposition, 
Not long ago, Paul Tossi of Forbes wrote an article talking about the issues that journalists face, and he dismissed the concern of players by saying, there is a public war against games journalism by in part the anti-woke crowd who believes the progressive-leaning outlets are going extinct because of alleged activist takes. Even when there are clear cases of many propagandized positions in today's gaming media. When you dismiss or ignore the elephant in the room, it doesn't make it smaller. That's not how this works. No wonder gamers could come to the conclusion that there is a concerted effort in the games industry to have this propagandized position, this plan that they have in place that they're using against a developer in the industry when every other journalist that's out there goes out and either hand waves the entire issue or ignores it entirely or co-signs for it. That's the case that we have with this article from The Guardian. She quite literally co-signs on what the girl had said in the article, even though it's already been shown that it was mistranslated and also misrepresented in their article that they made. So, of course, players are going to come to the conclusion of that. And what that does is it only serves to embolden the position of the players that held the belief that, well, there might have been an extortion fee to this because, well, if you're going to ignore this blatant lie that's attached to it, well, then chances are you're lying about the other thing too. That's the conclusion that people are going to come to. They are the ones that are creating this issue for themselves. Stop being so reactionary. Stop paying attention to what people are saying and ask why people are saying these things. Be proactionary. The article concludes with, I was running the UK branch of Kotaku when Gamergate kicked off, and I had a front row seat to their harassment tactics which included sending the most disgusting threats imaginable through all online channels available to them, trying to get me fired by emailing game publishers and my bosses with dossiers of my professional misdeeds and journalistic failings. Read, writing about video games from a feminist perspective. Searching for me and my colleagues' real addresses and phone numbers and family members and posting those details to their subreddits if they found them and putting them together in unhinged Google Docs with links drawn between social justice warrior journalists and developers. One of these mad documents briefly appeared in a recent documentary about 4chan, prompting several of my friends to text me a screenshot asking me if I knew I was a figure in an old alt-right conspiracy theory. Unfortunately, yes I did. It's happened again a few times since, for various reasons. Unfortunately, dealing with online mobs is a part of the job for many journalists and indeed game developers these days. And despite all of the shit that I've dealt with over the years as a woman covering video games, I'm still rather glad that I don't write about politics. But I know exactly how awful it can feel when they mobilize against you, especially if it's the first time. They'll search for whatever they think is the least flattering image of you on Google Images, use it as a cutout for a YouTube thumbnail, and then rant for 10 minutes over screenshots of your articles. They'll tweet prominent people in games trying to get them to publicly discredit you. They'll set their followers on you. It's not hard to meet their manufactured rage with a lot of genuine rage of your own. It's tempting to dunk on these people endlessly, but outrage fuels outrage, especially now, when there's literal money to be made posting inflammatory nonsense on X or YouTube. If Gamergate proved anything, it's that nobody has to pander to rage-baiting toxic gamers or even listen to them. That said, I still don't think there's been enough public pushback against this flavor of online abuse from the biggest publishers in games over the past few months. When the consultancies they work with, the journalists and critics that cover them, and even some of their own developers have been caught in an online shitstorm. Take it from me, vocal support means a lot. This goes without saying, but none of this should happen to anyone. There is zero justification for it whatsoever. Nobody should ever be publicly or privately attacked for any of their opinions. Criticized, yes, but going after their personal information is just weird. However, notice how generalized it becomes and how easy it is to see plain old criticism lobbed in with online psychos. I'm now included in them because I'm sitting here ranting over screenshots of her article, though I have nothing to do with the crowd of people that she's so vehemently against. Moreover, calling for big players in the industry to come out publicly on your side only serves to validate the concerns of biases in favor of better reviews and more flattering articles about these different companies' games. The industry speaking out against the crazies doesn't make the crazies go away, it adds another plot point on their graph and another justification for them to come after you.
Look, the fact of the matter is your fight is won. Games are more inclusive than they ever have been before. That oppression once perceived has now dissipated. Keza said it herself in the article when commenting, talking about the diversity of characters that she saw during Summer Games Fest. We all saw it. But what were the most popular and talked about games of the upcoming releases from Summer Games Fest? Gears of War and Monster Hunter Wilds, games that are fueled by that male power fantasy that she talked about. And why is that? Well, that's because that audience is now becoming underserved as game developers are grifting off to the victory of inclusivity. Again, stop paying attention to what players are saying and ask why players are feeling a certain way. I feel like people are too busy fighting a war that's already won, cheering on these developers while they are making more games about what a character is rather than who a character is. Ironically, the character part of the equation of game development has been thrown out the window for how a character looks and identifies instead. These games lack soul and purpose. Notice how a developer of a great game with a diverse cast of characters or with a strong female lead doesn't need to grift off of social issues. They know what they made. They know that they don't need to make a character that players can identify with. They need to make a character that players want to play as, want to be, and want to know more about. The conclusion that I've come to is that by ignoring existing audiences, these folks are radicalizing those audiences. Just recently, I saw a interview that popped up where the people that are in charge of Star Wars basically came out and said that they're ignoring existing audiences or ignoring the fan, angry fans, the loud fans, because... Well, they're trying to create a new audience and they don't care what they think, but ignoring the people that got you to where you are in the first place doesn't make a lot of sense, especially when those people are as invested as they are, as long as they've been invested. And yeah, they're going to be mad. Of course, they're going to be mad. Why does that confuse you that they would be upset? Recently, what I've noticed is within video games is that the quality of the game itself, the quality of how fun it is, how interesting it is, how great the story is, all of those things are taking a backseat to game character identities and that doesn't mean that inclusivity and diversity is bad it just means that they're not putting priorities where they should be they're not dividing those priorities equally and as such they're not making games that players are going to enjoy players are going to love they're going to be successful that are going to be remembered and that's a problem and especially when it's as widespread as it's been growing lately and when you have more games that are coming out there that are grifting off of these social issues yeah, players are going to start looking at games with female protagonists and different diverse character backgrounds and say, wow, this is probably going to suck. And I hate to say it, but lately it's been more times than not because think about it. The vast majority of games that come out every year, how many of them are actually really good? There's only very few that we all play. So yeah, the vast majority of those are going to be hit or miss. And there's a lot of misses that are out there and you're going to start to put plots on a graph and connect the dots. And next thing you know, well, this is the thing that I'm seeing that's the trend that's making these games worse, and that's the conclusion that a lot of these players are going to end up coming to. I don't really know exactly what the solution to this is, especially because I think a lot of the people that are in these positions and a lot of these game companies, media companies in general, movies, television, whatever, I think a lot of it is actually like nepotism more than anything else. Like people that got into positions of like high power that don't deserve it whatsoever and have no idea what they're doing. And the only thing that they can do is the one original idea that they think is original, which is doing everything that they think everybody else is doing, which is making their games more inclusive. And they're just focusing on that because that helps to distract from everything else. I do genuinely think there's a lot of people that are out there that are using it as a shield to be able to block themselves from criticism. I do think that. And if that's not what they're doing, then they're just bad at their jobs in general. So there's that. But yeah. Anyway, tell me what you guys think about this. I... I don't know where things are going. There's a lot of games to look forward to next year. I know that for a fact. But yeah. Anyway, thank you guys for watching this long. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Tell me what you guys think down in the comments. Dislike the video if you don't like my points. Like the video if you do. You don't have to watch me any longer if you don't. And uh, yeah, that's all I got. Anyway, stay cool, stay righteous, stay safe. I will see you guys next time. Peace. Family, 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 family.